Hello, and thank you all for joining us this morning in what promises to be an engaging webinar titled Driving Content Growth in West Africa. My name is IMJ Jones, Head of Product Management at Ming One, an Equinix company, and I'll be your anchor for the day. I'm joining you live from Lagos, Nigeria. We're very much interested in our audience, our participants. So could you kindly drop your name and where you're joining us from? And I'll be sure to say hello to you. Okay, before I get to some names coming through, but first to some housekeeping rules. Today's session is planned for one hour. It will commence with a keynote speech followed by an engaging panel session. And we should be done within the hour. So by 12 o'clock West African time. As this is a webinar, you will have the chat and Q&A Q &A box available for you. Let's have the chat open for just engaging in the conversation. And the Q&A will be for the panel session only. We have a huge, amazing lineup of panelists. So if you have questions for a panelist in particular, please be sure to include their name in the panel question. Okay, if you have any more inquiries, you can send them to am6lagos at mdxi.net, which should be in the chat box. I can see Ben from UK, Angie from Germany, Osmane, sorry if I pronounced that name wrong, from Ghana, hello. Richmond from Ghana, Hitchman from Mali, fantastic. Dominique from the Netherlands, fantastic. Once again, hello and welcome to all our participants from around the world. Today's exciting webinar is brought to you in collaboration between Main Data Exchange Data Centers, otherwise known as MDXI, and Amsterdam Internet Exchange, otherwise known as AMSIX. MDXI is an Equinix company with a growing ecosystem of data centers. We currently have data centers of data centers in West Africa, actually. We currently have data centers in Nigeria, Ghana, and Cote d'Ivoire. AM6 is one of the largest hubs of inter internet traffic in the world. It was established in the 1990s in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands. It operates from 16 pops with 873 networks, pushing a total peak traffic of 11.76 terabytes of traffic. MDXI and AM6 went into partnership in August, 2022, and it was announced at the 2022 edition of African Peering and Interconnection Forum, otherwise known as AFPIF, which was held in Rwanda. The 2023 edition of AFPIF would hold in Ghana and is proudly hosted by Main One and Equinix Company. We look forward to seeing you all virtually or in person in Ghana. To register and for more information, please use the link that has just been dropped in the chat box. Following the collaboration announcement, AM6 Lagos was launched in Q2 of 2023, more precisely, April 2023. It currently boosts 26 peers and many new networks connecting every week. This also includes unique West African peers. Now to the crux of the matter, West Africa. According to the United Nations, Africa has the youngest and second largest population in the world. West Africa's population accounts for 30% of the African population. This represents opportunities as well as some challenges. Opportunities because this young population represents eyeballs who are tech savvy and they're digitally engaged. This demographic is actively creating and consuming digital content, driving demand for diverse and relevant content. There are some challenges because a gap in access to content still exists. AM6 Lagos was birthed to bridge this divide connecting eyeballs to content across West Africa by MDXI's rich ecosystem, which is career neutral. Now, we, what we're gonna look and dive deeper into the key enablers for content growth in West Africa. We are gonna look at, we're gonna look at the raw digital infrastructure such as AM6 and MDXI play in bridging this digital divide. So coming up next is our keynote speech by Walter Ensing. He has a keynote speech titled Lagos, AM6 Lagos, a content hub and cooperative models. Walter Ensing is an experienced business development manager at AM6 and regional director for the African continent. Walter has a long history working in the IT and services industry 
and is a strong believer in driving and maintaining long lasting relationships. Good morning. Hello, Walter. Can you hear me? Hey, good morning, uh, Ayamida. Yeah, I can hear you well. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Good to have you here. Over to you. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you again. Um, welcome to everyone. Uh, the majority probably in the in the morning if you're in Africa, but if you're in other parts of the world, uh, perhaps uh, afternoon, evening, uh, welcome. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, driving content into into Africa and, and specifically West Africa. Uh, and, and we've got some uh, some slides on that and um, how we believe that from from our perspective in in Amsterdam Internet Exchange we can we can add value to that, to that process. So looking at our uh, looking at our mission uh, as, as a company, we're trying to contribute to a better society by creating a better internet. The internet has brought us a lot of good things, but uh, but also some not so good things and. It, we believe it's our uh, it's our responsibility to, um, uh, to to try and work on that as a as a company, and with that help society. So, if we look at the content, um, if we look at content in general, if we look at the uh, the evolution of content in general uh, throughout the internet, we can see it kind of moves through four phases. Um, content gets uh, uh, gets deployed uh, uh, typically somewhere in the world. Someone invents an application or uh, uh, a, a game, uh, etc. And it's and it's global deployment uh, or global delivery from from a central location. Um, in in the next phase, and and we've seen we've seen quite a few uh, content providers do that in uh, in in Africa. It moves into the continent, and and typically in Africa, the uh, the logical place for content to move with South Africa, not because it's necessarily the biggest country, but it's probably, on the one hand, one of the most stable and, and predictable economies, uh, as well as it's the furthest away, uh, uh, hence it has the biggest effect. So, so kind of what we saw was that the north of Africa was uh, um, surfaced from uh, uh, from Europe and 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 possibly the US. And the, the sub-Saharan part of Africa was typically surfaced from uh, uh, content which is um, stored in uh, in South Africa. Now, recently, uh, we've seen uh, we've seen the move that uh, um, content providers are moving to kind of regional setup uh, with deployments in uh, in East Africa, which is typically uh, Kenya, either Nairobi or uh, Mombasa, and. Uh, on the west side, it's typically Nigeria. Nigeria is by far the biggest country uh, in, in terms of population, uh, also in terms of uh, economy. So it, uh, it, it, it kind of makes sense. And, you know, the next phase uh, is very likely to be that all the content is going to be deployed locally in, in markets. And, and in markets that could be in country, uh, but in markets that could also be in specific parts of, uh, of a country. And and when we look at uh, when we look at the U.S. and Europe, uh, you know, we're even talking edge deployments, uh, which kind of means on city uh, level. But you know, we've got a long way to go in uh, in Africa, and and a lot of things to uh, to achieve still <clears throat> before we're there. So so if we look at Africa, and and again specifically uh, uh, West Africa, although. Uh, uh, some of the larger content providers have moved into uh, into the continent. Uh, you know, there's still a general lack of content in uh, physically in the region, and and not having content in region and therefore consuming it remotely and remotely could be, uh, you know, five to ten thousand uh, uh, kilometers away. It creates unnecessary cost. It creates latency. But it also creates a slowdown of the uh, uh, the, the total local uh, development of the internet. <clears throat> so it's it's extremely important to get content into the region, get it deployed locally, and and from our perspective in in Amsix, we believe we can uh, we can add value to that process. Uh, you know, utilizing our global relationships, our brand, and and our experience to help to to bring content into uh, into the region. <laughs> now, if we if we look at what's required on uh, accelerating that development, um, we believe there's a couple of elements which are uh, uh, which are truly uh, uh, important. Now, in order to attract content into the region, we need to be able to provide them reach. 
uh, content providers typically are looking for um, eyeballs or users. So by being able to provide reach, we will attract content providers. By having content providers, we will get uh, uh, eyeballs again. So first of all, extending that reach uh, by creating a, a network uh, that provides scale through carriers, through uh, uh, collaborative uh, internet exchanges, data centers, we will reach more ISPs. With that, we can aggregate the demand uh, uh, in, in the whole region, which makes it easier to attract the content. And once the contact is there, it's, uh, uh, it drives the adoption of more ISPs, and, and we get this vicious circle uh, uh, rolling in the, in the right direction. So what would that look like? Uh, what we're trying to do uh, as, as AMSIX is create uh, uh, and what we call a regional content hub, which means we're trying to attract that content to the region, but we're also trying to make that content available in the region. So we're also trying to uh, see if we can surface or serve local, uh, uh, local networks in the neighboring countries in cooperation with both carriers but also with uh, uh, affiliated or federated or uh, partnered uh, internet exchanges. And by creating that, um, uh, uh, that network, which covers essentially a, a larger region just than uh, a country, we can offer an efficient platform for the content providers and therefore accelerating their landing. Um, over time, they will go to, uh, um, uh, to a country-based uh, um, uh, 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 surface so landing in Nigeria first and then moving to Ghana Cameroon uh, uh, Ivory Coast etc makes perfect sense but the first step needs to be efficient and, and that's really what we're trying to uh, what we're trying to build an efficient platform for those content providers to land in the region and from there grow into into countries so really we're looking for uh, uh, companies partners uh, who, who support this idea uh, who support this philosophy, um, you know, who have a good reputation as well, and, and can add uh, value to this uh, to this process and this uh, and this goal. So this is what it more or less should look like. Um, different countries, all uh, or different regions, all connected uh, uh, to a local uh, or a central content hub. And this is not meant as a hierarchical. Um, uh, a, a setup. Let me let me be very clear about this. This is this is meant as a cooperative uh, uh, business model, <clears throat> and this is also how we how we approach the world, how we how we look at the world. As M6, and we and we've been kind of vocal about it. We are not looking to deploy fifteen uh, internet exchanges across West Africa ourselves. There is no point in us doing that. There is there are local companies, there are local initiatives which work really, really well, but may not have the, uh, the scale or may not have the scale today uh, uh, to serve the region or to attract international uh, content. So, so that's where we can uh, add value. That's where we can support. That's where our knowledge and experience and our relationships come in. But we're not looking to, uh, uh, to deploy in each and every country ourselves because we'd rather work with local partners that can help, that A, understand the market much better, uh, and B, that will help us drive uh, uh, the development of the region. And that goes back to our, uh, to our mission, you know, creating a, uh, a better society by creating or contributing to a better society by creating a better internet. But that also means driving local development rather than doing it ourselves. And, and this is where our cooperative approach uh, versus a competitive approach uh, comes in. And we, we honestly believe in in that way of doing business. So what that looks like uh, uh, from a regional hub perspective, there is essentially on the one hand, there's the content providers. We can see them on, on the top in this picture. Then there's the regional uh, internet exchange, in this case, uh, uh, AMSIX. And then we have three routes to market. Uh, uh, the, the local market, the direct market. Uh, so, so we're looking for local partners. Well, as uh, as Ayamida mentioned, um, uh, we've been we've been deploying with MDXI. We announced our partnership uh, in April uh, or in um, August last year, and and physically deployed in April. Uh, went open for business in uh, in May, and we're adding customers since 
uh, new customer since June. This partnership is working really, uh, really well at the moment. Uh, so, so uh, NDXI is our launching partner in uh, in Nigeria. That doesn't mean we're exclusive, nor are they. But this is this is our launching partner, and and we're doing um, uh, we're doing really well. With that, uh, we we have some regional carriers. We have a few that were already connected to MDXI. Uh, MDXI themselves have, are a regional carrier since they have. Uh, connectivity into uh, into some of the neighboring countries, but we're also looking for multiple uh, carriers that can get us access to other uh, uh, regions, so that local partners in other regions can access and make use of the uh, the content that we can provide, which is unique for uh, for West Africa. <clears throat> Those are companies such as uh, Angola Cables, uh, but but there's many uh, many more PCW. Um, uh, and I said uh, MDXI with the, uh, the current connectivity that they have already. Then thirdly, um, and, 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 and this may be an interesting uh, point, we are very much open to work with local internet exchanges. Because if we can make, uh, as, as AMSIX, if we can make our content available to local markets through local internet exchanges, that means that the local ISPs, the local eyeballs, uh, will benefit from lower cost, from high quality. Um, it, it may mean that we will generate a little bit less revenue as a company, but we will develop uh, uh, internet exchanges in local countries. We honestly believe that that cooperation, uh, uh, that, that aggregation of demand uh, will drive our, our business kind of like a cauliflower, where once content providers will move locally and, 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 and possibly Ben can, uh, can say something about it uh, uh, later on. Uh, you know, they probably have plans to, to move into, into local countries, which means we may, may lose some content providers, which, are, which may be unique today to the region, which may not be unique to all the countries anymore uh, going forward. But we will, as, as an internet exchange, as, as the uh, uh, international internet exchange, we will focus on bringing on new and new and new content so that this whole ecosystem uh, uh, keeps uh, keeps rolling. So really, this is how we uh, how we look at the world. We want to cooperate. We want to collaborate um, in a cooperative uh, uh, manner to attract more content, which will serve the whole region uh, uh, better, and with that contribute to a uh, a better internet, and with that to a better society. So, if you want to be part of that. Um, you know, we'd, we'd like to welcome you on board. This is what it more or less looks like today. This is obviously an ever-changing uh, uh, snapshot, but it gives you an indication of uh, the, the 20 plus ISPs that we currently have connected, uh, some of the content providers that we have on board, some of the content providers we're talking to. We have a long list of uh, uh, partners with whom we have a, an international relationship who are reaching out to uh, today. Uh, so this is what it looks like. And and hopefully we can uh, mutually get this uh, uh, this map to be growing darker and darker, better coverage, more content, and and with that better internet. So, again, if you want to be part of that uh, that journey, please feel free to reach out either to me, to myself um, at wouterensen at amsix.net, or to our uh, MDXI team at amsixlagos at mdxi.com. Well, That's it for me, uh, Ayamida. Back to you. Yes, thank you so much, Walter. That was very engaging. Um, just three points from your keynote speech. There's lack of content regionally and locally, which creates unnecessary costs and latency, amongst other things. Also, extending reach to attract networks, networks enables demand aggregation and also attracts more content, which creates a better internet across West Africa and in turn attracts more eyeballs who again attract more content. It's like a revolver. And finally, a cooperative approach, working with local partners who understand the mechanism of interaction in their local domain is the way forward to connecting the whole of West Africa. Thank you very much, Walter. Now we're gonna move on to our panel session, which is gonna be moderated by Uluwa Shayo Oshadami with two esteemed panelists, Kenda Anayi and Ben Nicklin. Now to a quick short bio, bio on all three. Oluwa Shai Oshadami is the General Manager, Technical Solutions and Managed Services at Main One, an Equinix company. He's been with Main One for over 12 years and is responsible for product development, commercial solutions, 
design architecture and product and project delivery at Ming Wan. It's a mouthful. Next, we have Kendall Anai. Kendall is the founder of Tizeti Networks, which operates as wifi.com.ng. Wifi.com.ng is an internet provider operating in Africa. We are le leveraging solar panels to create low OPEX CAPEX networks of owned and operated towers to offer disruptive, customer-friendly pricing for unlimited internet. Kendall has over 20 years experience in the telecoms and IT space. And finally, we have Ben Nicklin. Ben Nicklin is a director of network strategy and interconnection at EDU. He joined the IT and telecoms industry almost 30 years ago, and is responsible for the combined global footprint of EDU, which is a merger between Namlight and Edgecast. Now over to you, Shaya. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, good morning, Ayomide, and thank you very much for that great introduction. So Ben and Kendall, it's great to have both of you on the panel today, as well, looking forward to the insight that both of you will be sharing with us regarding your industry experience. Uh, ben is the Director of Networks and Strategy for AGO, while Kendall is the MVC of TZT, a Wi-Fi company, like Ayomide said, who started operation in Lagos, and now has presence in three West African countries. <laughs> You're welcome, Kenneth. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Ben. Hi, everyone. All right. So we know that the ecosystem in West Africa continues to grow. New cables have been built, new data centers have been constructed, and we have the entrance of more content players in our market. And in addition to the exchange that we have that provides the enabling environment, for this content to continue to grow. Our webinar this morning, Driving Content Growth in West Africa, we touch on some of those drivers that enables content to grow in addition to the industry experience and takeaway we'll be learning from the likes of Ben and Kendall. I'd like to start with you, Kendall. You have presence in three countries in West Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, and Cote d'Ivoire. What has been the impact of your connection to a West African focused internet exchange like M6 in terms of network performance and service distribution? Oh, it's been really great. I think it's one of the best things um, that has happened to the industry in the last um, decade. Uh, we started business 11, 11 years ago. And when we started business, IP transit was the most expensive thing, component of our, our business. And um, thankfully with cables like me, once cable, that disrupted that whole uh, barrier to providing uh, internet. And so we took advantage of availability of those cables and were able to deliver unlimited internet, which is something that um, wasn't available as widely or even as um, or affordable. And so with that aspect of delivery of IP transit, the cost started declining, but not enough. Then right around, um, um, the pandemic, right, which where we saw an explosion of, of internet usage um, in 2020, um, what would have been a significant increase in the cost of transit to internet providers like us to be able to, to meet the demands of our customers. Um, and the, because, M, well, MDXI, uh, we moved to MDXI at that point in, in, in our history, and we're able to meet the demands of our customer without actually a, um, needing to increase the capacity of IP transit we had. And so there was a significant, um, uh, when you look at the cost of, of transit and, and interconnection, overall, there was significant save, cost savings to for an ISP of our size. And over time, what we've seen in the last um, three years, we now have seen that we now have more traffic going through the exchange versus over um, the cable um, on IP transit. So that's significant, to, to put it in perspective, almost 60% of our traffic now is true on exchange, and that's significant cost savings. And ov obviously even the capacity too, because you can have um, 10 gig multiple 10 gig connections, and even we're approaching where we would even need a 100 gig connection too. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ken, for that wonderful uh, insight regarding your own experience. Um, Ben, you, you heard from Ken regarding his own experience, right? Um, 
has been able to reduce cost of transit and that enabled him to save some money. I mean, and, and money, saving money is king. Uh, how has local internet exchange contributed to better distribution of your content in West Africa? So from a content point of view, the, the key thing for us is that we, our main drive is to always peer where we can. Um, peering, whilst it's not always, especially with the reduction in IP transit costs these days, is not always the cheapest method, but it's the most reliable method. Because with transit, you have no control over latency, whereas with peering, it has a known factor, which obviously when you're delivering live streaming content or large file updates, which is what we do, that's a very, very key factor. We have to have that performance level and that guaranteed performance. Thank you very much, uh, Ben. So another perspective in terms of performance, guaranteed performance connecting to the exchange. Ben, I have another question for you. So what attracted you to the West African market? So Africa was a key market or a new expanding market for us. Um, likewise, I think this harks back to Wouter's first slide in terms of how, how content providers have actually deployed into the region. So initially we were serving Africa as a continent from Europe. And then naturally the first point of call we built, we built into was Johannesburg. Now that's great. It serves a very large market, but it doesn't serve the smaller markets and the more regional markets. So again, our next hop after that, which I think went live approximately about three years ago, was Lagos. Because again, if we look at the continent as a whole, that is the next largest emerging market in terms of users, in terms of population, in terms of cable landing. That's the next logical step. All right. So has it been for you in terms of traffic growth, network performance and user experience setting up this pop in West Africa today? So performance has increased, um, traffic has increased, maybe not as much as the, the senior management might like, but uh, it has increased. Um, the, the key factors are as always the, the, the bit we've been missing, which is what I'm hoping certainly the, with the Amzix introduction is going to be coming in, is the more regional perspective. So within Nigeria, we serve about 95% of all of our Nigerian um, based providers from that pop in Nigeria with only a small regional coming from outside. Now, what we're missing are, is the ability to serve, again, by appearing the likes of Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, um, and the various other surrounding countries. That's what's been missing. And that's what I'm hoping with the Amsterdam introduction of trying to bring in maybe more regional providers in. That's the key factor. Thank you very much, uh, Ben, for that insight. And I'm sure that's the goal of M6 to bring that unique uh, pairs into the Lagos hub so that uh, the content distribution across the region will become more evenly uh, distributed. And now to you, Ken Kendall. Uh, CZT is connected to several uh, content delivery network in uh, the data center that you're located at, that's the MDXI facility in Lagos. In your perspective, how has the growth of content hosting in data center in West Africa enable you to improve internet experience for your customers? Okay, um, main thing is, so I talked about cost savings, which um, we pass to the customer, but again, customer, they're paying for experience, right? They want a great, great um, internet experience, right? And so even if you provide cheaper, affordable, unlimited internet, and they don't have a great experience, then you haven't really quite achieved um, your objective. It's not a win-win solution. So one of the things we've gained is latency, right? And which makes it a, a no-brainer, right? Um, when the content is sitting locally um, at uh, NDXI, the users are not accessing the content all the way across the cable, with 100 millisecond latency. The content is right there um, for them to access it. And so when you're accessing things like, um, to put it in perspective, like Netflix or a video on YouTube, it's much better when you're streaming it from within MDXI versus going over um, a submarine cable. So the latency experience has been good. and. One of the also good things, which is not obvious, right, but for an internet provider like us and our specific um, situation in Nigeria is, is uptime too, right? Because previously um, when there's like a submarine cable caught or um, there's downtime from when we're hosting our own, our own um, knock within our own facility, right? We didn't have that advantage, but with going to, MD, with moving all of our stuff, our infra to MDXI, we have um, significantly improved um, uptime. And then there's something I like about um, 
the internet exchange, right, which is now M6, right, is um, discovery of content. So the, the folks that handle it in, uh, in the organization, they're proactive. So whenever there's a new content provider, they actually email us and inform us that, oh, you have, you have access to this content. You can pair with this provider, which I think is very good. Very, very rare you see that kind of proactive um, service delivery across the industry. So that's really good, right? I know um, when Limelight connected to us, we're not even aware Limelight was available, um, which is something you don't have to do. So for a content provider coming into um, ARM6, you, it's, it's kind of that discovery of the content is also important because one thing for you to be available, another thing for you to peer with the internet, local internet provider. So I think that, um, that's something I've also seen across, um, widely across um, multiple regions that we have. But it's, um, it's great. Um, I, I've had the best experience um, working with you. With you know. Thank you very much, Ken, for bringing that insight once more. So Ben, you heard from Ken, uh, he's excited pairing with the likes of uh, Lamlight, formerly Lamlight, but now um, Edgeo. So how has your acquisition of Edcast uh, been and, and would it influence your investment in, in West Africa? Um, it's been it's certainly been challenging. It's been a very uh, interesting last year. Um, from our point of view, at the moment, it hasn't really affected it because we're still going through the amalgamation of how do we operate because they're two slightly different platforms. So the traditional limelight was very much large object. So we have large scale video, uh, large uh, downloads. The Edgecast network was traditionally more small object. So the two don't marry up that easily. So we're still kind of working out how do we deploy that? So at this moment, Edgecast content is not currently available in Lagos, but the legacy limelight one is. At some stage, once we go through the technical piece of it, yes, we will then bring both sets of content to be available within that exchange. And that will obviously increase then the traffic further. All right, thank you very much. So we're all excited. It means there's more to come. Uh, Ken, I mean, you can hear from Ben himself. So it tells you that more content are coming and your existing peers will grow. And uh, I mean, user experience for your customers also will, will significantly improve. Now that you heard from Ben, uh, sorry, yeah, now that you have from Ben regarding more content that will come after the consolidation of the acquisition of Edgecast, it means that uh, more content will grow. I have another question for you, Kendall. Being that you've heard from Ben, more content are coming. It, it tells us that the internet interconnection and penetration will continue to grow in our content. Are there any other driving factor that you think will enhance internet penetration in West Africa? Oh, sure. Um, so you can never, um, you, the closer you can get to the customer, right? Um, as a last mile provider, the better the experience. So we've moved content from across the submarine cable into um, MDXI data center. Obviously, um, where we're seeing a huge amount of growth within the continent is in what we're calling second tier, third tier cities. So First tier city, for for um, example, Nigeria will be a Lagos, um, a Lagos, but second tier will be a Abuja, PH, and all the other states from there. So one of the things that would would, would really significantly improve is more landing points across um, the continent to take traffic from those major um, locations into those secondary cities. And I know there's a lot of work happening in in the background on that, and even inland within. Um, the region itself, and so backhaul to other states, um, some of the smaller states, um, like um, stuff we partnered with Main One, um, Edo, right, Ogun, right. So that having those more co having those kind of connections, right, where you can then access the content to other locations where we're seeing significant growth, where even the population growth that we talked about having the long youngest population is is where we're seeing significant in, um, um, need for our service. For example, earlier this year, we announced that we're going to 10 more states beyond the five states we're in. And I know um, um, the other large internet companies, um, they've landed cables in Nigeria, are looking at landing cables in the south-south region of, of, of Nigeria. Those kind of things and establishing more data centers in outside of Lagos would significantly improve um, internet access. So, for example, having the same kind of wishful thinking, same kind of um, so even if it's a smaller subset of MDXI in a place like Parakot, 
or somewhere in Abuja or Kano, we are making more geographically dispersed and bringing more edge content to those locations, right? With your folks, that would that would improve good internet experience and also reduce the cost. Because as you can imagine, in those smaller states, and um, disposable income is not as great, and so there's even a, a more need for people like internet providers like us to um, further reduce the cost of delivering internet uh, to those customers. Thank you very much, Ken. And I'm sure other operators, industry experts, and investors are, are all listening to you. So I'm sure you'll be excited about investing in all of those uh, smaller markets so we can open up uh, those markets and populations so they can have access to more affordable uh, internet. Uh, ben, I have a question for you. Because uh, from your bio, it shows that you have uh, deployed uh, your infrastructure in several markets. From your experience, what are some of the challenges and opportunities that you think will help in driving content growth in West Africa? So West Africa or Africa as a, as a whole, certainly West Africa, from my experience, is certainly a lot easier to work in than some other regions. So there are certain markets within Asia and certainly the Middle East, which are intrinsically harder because there is no carrier mm -hmm. neutrality. You know, if you needed to work with a particular provider, you have to deploy within that provider. There is no choice. There is no other option about it. Um, what Amzix and, and MDXI have, have achieved is by creating that carrier neutrality. It means that I can build a single node, which then will connect to multiple providers. And therefore, get, in terms of bang for my buck, in terms of my investment, gives me more ability to connect to those. With any market such as this, I mean, the, the providers will use it, and one of my team uses it a lot. We, we use the term ecosystem because it, there has to be that ecosystem. You have to get that whole balance of getting the content providers there, attracting the eyeball networks. And it's a little bit of a catch-22 because without the eyeballs, you can't attract content. Without the content, you can't attract the eyeballs. So you have to try and find a way to manage that and get and balance that and bring both together. And that's that's a challenge that Amzix have done very well over in many years. And I mean, I've worked with them for the last 12 years. I've been doing peering. Thank you very much, Ben. And uh, it shows the role that uh, uh, being neutral in, in the market, please, in enabling content uh, distribution from what you've said, uh, operating in, in the Lagos MDXI facility. Uh, Mr. Ken, I have a question for you. In what ways do you think the government, for example, or maybe the regulatory bodies can encourage the development of content and also network providers to grow this content in West Africa? Great. Um... We've seen um, over the last five years, we've seen how the, the technology startup industry has grown and which may one was one of um, the foundation on which all of that was built once you um, ran the ca your cable to Yaba and that um, seeded a lot of startups. And a lot, over the last couple of years, we've had um, it's almost billions of dollars that have gone into investing in, um, in those um, startups over the last uh, six years at least. Right, and so those startups are generating content, um, even if it's transactions, whatever um, uh, kind of information is being passed around between them and their customers. And most of this um, traffic is actually sitting in servers um, outside of the country, right? And this is content that could actually be local uh, and the latency on, of accessing those content to the customers will be a lot better if those contents were brought in Locally, so there are things that um, the regulators can do and mandate, right, um, to ensure that those servers can come home and sit locally, right. Versus, um, and there's there's savings, right, um, if you we having your server locally in local currency versus um, accessing it uh, for paying for those kind of servers outside of the country in, in foreign exchange, right. Um, we know how the foreign exchange um, issue in Nigeria is, but having those content here, it's is a, it's a no, it's a no brainer. The content is available to you are, you are you are being built in local currency and obviously the latency to your customer is a lot less so then there's no reason why you should your content shouldn't even be local if you are if you are a cto of any of the companies on 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 this webinar and so those are some of the things i know um the central bank has mandated things that you should have a local server if you're a fintech um, um startup 
And then even on the Nollywood side, right? Um, look at how our, our content have exploded around the world. Um, you see um, Amazon Prime here, you see Netflix sponsoring local content here. And um, um, those movies, uh, look, well, for those large companies, most of them have the content here. But even as a smaller player um, who is um, a small studio um, um, having a, a movie release, right? Those content should be streamed locally here because Nollywood is big, right? And same thing, it also helps on the other way, the stuff we can also export too. So um, where our content should be local, why are people accessing that content from outside the world, right? Right, that's some kind of export too, yeah. right? And so in, the, in, the, in that scenario, our cable is now um, sending content the other way because it's local from here too, and generating revenue for, uh, for the um, tra uh, transit providers too. And so with um, that industry, um, trying to mandate things happening locally or with the amount of content that they're generating um, between that and, and um, the regulators, trying to ensure that um, the startups that they work with um, are, are taking advantage of um, data centers. That, that, and there are quite a num number right now, right? Um, we should see that, that I think is the, the government's role in all of that, providing that platform for that to happen. Okay. Thank you very much, Ken, for that very insightful point. Um, and I'm sure Ben will have something to say about that regarding the role of uh, government and regulatory body. Ben, what, what, what's your view on that? I mean, given that you have other operational experience, I mean, in Europe, so you know how government and regulatory bodies support uh, content and network providers. Well, what's your own? So Africa is actually probably one of the better ones for that, because again, across Europe, the, the government doesn't typically get to, or government regulatory doesn't typically get too involved anymore, um, because those markets have been fairly well established, as, same across the US. Um, Middle East, we have had some experience where you know the TRA, for instance, you know, working with UAIX have actually built and worked with a number of different providers to try and bring that together, which to some limited su success, because unfortunately the providers don't work well together. I think in Africa, there has been probably more positive impact from the government actually getting involved and actually trying to assist those markets to grow and actually seeing that there is benefit to their populations rather than just simple profitability. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben, for that insight. I'd like to thank the both of you for your great contribution. Um, I think we're coming to the end of the panel session. And any closing remark, starting with Ben? Um, I think the main thing for us is that simply reach out to us. Um, we, we don't automate our, our, our emails and things yet. So if you reach out to my peering team and ask for peering, you will actually get a human being on the other end of it who will take a look at it. And uh, you know, whilst we do technically have a peering policy, that gets a little bit bent when we have emerging markets. So you know, don't just take our, don't just read the word for word, actually reach out and ask. Um, we typically do not use root servers. So you won't automatically just pick us up. So you will need to actually reach out and just set up BGP sessions with us. Thank you very much, Ben. Ken, close remarks from you, any? Oh, same, um, just uh, to all the internet providers, um, this is something you should take advantage of. I know a lot of folks who are stuck in our ways thinking about transit, <laughs> trying to buy more, tra buy more transit, but we can actually um, have significant cost savings and also improved performance by um, pairing at, at M6. Okay. All right, thank you very much. And thank you very much to our guests who, are, who joined uh, the panel session to listen to both Ken and Ben from their industry experience. If you would like to benefit from the ecosystem that has been built by both MDXI and M6, you can contact us through the email on the chat box, m 6 Lagos at mdxi.com. Now back to you, Ayomide. Wow, what a fantastic panel session. I didn't want it to end, but obviously we're short and pressed for time. Um, we have a few questions. I think we have five minutes for questions. Um, I have one for Walter, actually. Um, it says, hello, Walter. For the other countries, regions you operate in, what are the usual drivers for content growth and why? Yeah, well, interestingly, that, that, that depends a bit. Um, as, as we've, as I uh, uh, showed in, in the presentation, there, there's kind of the, uh, uh, the logical phases that, that uh, uh, content distribution go through. And I, I think it's fair to say that 
uh, Europe and the US are probably furthest uh, uh, ahead in, 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 in this curve uh, than Asia, uh, then probably um, uh, uh, Latin America, and then uh, well, the, the, the Middle East, North Africa, and, and Africa region uh, behind that. Uh, so, so really, per uh, per continent or per region, it, it 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 varies. It varies much on 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 where content providers are, I guess, uh, in in um, in in that curve. Okay, so it's safe to say that the response, the answer is subjective, depending on the region. Um, yeah. I have one question for for Ben, actually. Dear participants, if you have questions, you can drop them using the Q&A box. Uh, we'll take one or two uh, for the participants. I have one for Ben. It says, um, hi, Ben. What kind of content does Edu provide to end users in Africa? So I'm not sure if they want to know Edgecast and Limelight, which is different, or they're asking for the combined um, kind of um, content that Edu is providing to users in Africa. So the the, the simple answer at the moment is, Traditionally, it's um, large scale video um, events. So we have a lot of uh, large sports events that get streamed. Not so much, not so much into Africa, but certainly to other regions. We, you know, we have a lot of those. Um, right. The major one we actually see into Africa are actually the large scale downloads. So this right. is um, PlayStation and Xbox downloading. So those are the those are typically the biggest spikes that we see. Okay, thank you, Ben. Um... I have one for Tizetti, yeah, for Kendall. Um, it says Tizetti has established presence in Ghana, Nigeria, CIV. Do you have any plans to expand to other countries? Oh, sure. Um, so we are focused on West Africa. So we've um, done surveys, uh, market entry, um, research analysis of additional countries. The most near-term ones are um, Togo for us and also Liberia and um, we're always open to partner with um, with another ISPs in form of um, investments or partnerships so so yes our focus is on West Africa and um, yeah as quickly as we can get to every single country we'll try to get there. Okay thank you very much um, Kendall. Do we have any more questions? Um, I think there's one here for Walter. Okay, I'm just trying to go through them because we're pressed for time. Um, what is Ant6 Lagos' role in the West Africa digital ecosystem? Well, I I would like to hope we are a facilitator. Um, you know, we we didn't we didn't establish a new IX. We we partnered with MDXI, and uh, you know, and 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 essentially. Uh, it took the West Africa uh, internet uh, internet exchange, which which was already established, and trying to build it out. And and you know, I guess the 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 point of our you know our story for for West Africa is really that we uh, uh, we want to cooperate with other partners. Um, you know, if we if we look at what we're good at, uh, it's in, it's international partnerships uh, such as with with Edjo, but but also quite a few others. And 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 our ability to bring them to the region is the value we can add. You know, operating uh, uh, the technology uh, of an internet exchange, we don't necessarily do. Uh, uh, you know, ten times better than than a local partner doing business locally. I mean, we we didn't go to school in uh, uh, in in the region. I mean, we don't know the local uh, the local way of doing business. So we're definitely not better at that. So uh, uh, really, you know, kind of. Humbly, uh, uh, we're, we're trying to add value by by bringing in content, and that that's why that's so much our focus, and that's why the, the cooperation with with local partners is is so much our uh, um, on our, on our radar, rather than you know do it ourselves, conquer the world, because it, this is not about conquering the world. This is about working together, making making the internet better in uh, in the region, and you know I guess there's there's a lot to gain, and and that makes it kind of rewarding to uh, to be able to do this together. Thank you, Walter. Maybe we'll conquer the world in the process. <laughs> Just a joke. Um, Shia, um, I think I have a similar question for MDXI. Would you be able to answer that? So what is MDXI role, role in the West Africa digital ecosystem when it comes to internet exchange connections? 
I mean, uh, just like what I said, our, our role is to facilitate and provide that platform um, for the likes of the internet exchanges and also the content providers and the networks to build that infrastructure where they can bring all of their services and aggregate and interconnect with uh, each other. As you know, we have data center in Lagos. We're still building more data center. Uh, the rollout plan to expand our facility. There's also a data center in Apollonia in Ghana. We have a data center in VT in Abidjan, and there are plans to grow this footprint so we can enable uh, the infrastructure and provide the likes of Edgeo, more content players, a platform to host their infrastructure. And with the likes of M6, work with them to provide that interconnect across West Africa, enabling the likes of Tizeti to expand into all of this market, leveraging this infrastructure that we've set and the partnership that we've also established with networks across this market and all the content players that we're aggregating in our infrastructure. I think that's the role that we play. We're more of an enabler, bringing the content players together, uh, the exchange, the networks, providing that platform where they come and interconnect and exchange traffic. Thank you, Shaya. So M6 is a facilitator, MDXI is an enabler. I think that's a good summary. I have one question here for Ken. It says, hi, Ken. What type of traffic slash content growth trends are you seeing in the market in the last few years? And does adverse economic situations impact, the neg impact negatively on content growth? Oh, um, so like I previously said, uh, the more traffic that we have local, the better for us. So even if there's traffic growth, it's pretty much um, the same cost, irrespective of the capacity that we need. Um, and so we would like more content um, it, because for us, it's not, it doesn't factor into the cost. What actually drives the cost that we um, deliver, the, uh, the cost of us delivering service to our customers with how much we're spending on IP transit because that's significantly uh, more, right? And, and so this helps overall reduce our cost, which we then transfer those cost savings to our customer. Right. And in terms of what we're seeing growing, there's a lot of video content in um, being that we, we started off as a residential ISP. It might be different if you're serving a lot more enterprises, but we're seeing, um, because people are also working from home, so we're seeing a lot more traffic on things like um, the pairing we have with Microsoft, right? Because there's a lot of people doing Teams um, over, uh, over the, from when working from home, right? And that's obviously when you're doing a, a video call, uh, that consumes more bad bandwidth. But also you've seen on the residential side, people are doing a lot of net, um, Netflix um, streaming in off-peak and, um, and at night too, right on, on the weekends too. We see a lot of um, YouTube, YouTube is huge, right? Um, if it's, if it's the kids, even regular folks, right? So we're seeing a lot more video content. That's, this, that's the biggest driver. Then in terms of uh, specific companies, um, Facebook traffic, well, Meta, the group of Meta because of their family of apps, right? There's nothing you're doing in Africa where you don't wake up and either check your Facebook or if it's Instagram, if you're an Instagram person, or if, even if it's a WhatsApp call, if you're calling people, there's a lot. So all of the things you're seeing with not as many um, voice call, uh, voice traffic, um, not growing as much or being um, declining. In fact, um, you're seeing that in the form of uh, WhatsApp um, traffic growing. So Facebook is one of, in terms of the big, uh, the um, Fang or Maga or whatever you, the big tech companies, Facebook's um, traffic is huge, um, and all of that um, for for someone as an internet provider like us, having um, um, uh, connecting at MDXI, all of that traffic is free in quote because we can access it over here. Versus in the past when we started, when I told you about eleven years ago, all of that traffic was going through IP transit. Okay, thank you. I hope that helps. Yeah, thank you, um, Kendall. Just to summarize, they say shift from voice to video, and the video is released on social media and content as video, um, video streaming, music streaming, and social media, thanks to the likes of Meta, et cetera. Um, thank you for that response. We have a question in the chat box from Bicham. Bicham is joining us from Mali, and his question is, what is planned by AM6 to expand reach to expand the reach of content and interconnection to countries which have no access to submarine cable, so landlocked countries like Mali, for example. Yeah, well, if I understand the, the, the question correctly, uh, um, you know, 
it's it's about what we're what we're trying to to do to make you know that content available in um, uh, well, in countries which have which do not have access to those uh, uh, subsea cables today. Um, you know, and I, and I think it goes a bit broader than just the countries that don't have the subsea cables. Um, really, what we're trying to do is is build the network with with carriers of multiple uh, uh, entries into all the uh, uh, into all the regions. Ideally, also with um, um, uh, other internet exchanges to make that uh, content available in, in multiple places, uh, because multiple multiple routes, multiple places, uh, and, and and that also goes for us means there's choice, uh, which which brings down uh, which brings down cost, which brings down price, uh, which which brings up uh, uh, possibilities uh, opportunities because it's. It's available via uh, multiple routes, uh, and that, that brings up user experience and um, uh, and, and and security. As, as Ben said, you know, having uh, uh, having the security that um, uh, uh, the, the reliability of of the delivery of content is, uh, is is key. So so building multiple routes uh, into actually all locations, uh, into all regions around us. Um, is is I guess what we're trying to to achieve to yeah, to 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 pump up the availability of uh, of the content and again that content will move locally over time so uh, you know the the first movers such as such as as Edgeo, uh will be the first ones to you know to also move to uh, uh, countries like like Mali for example um, you know and and then and then on the long tail we will uh, we will look at, uh, at at additional content trying to attract it to the region for the ones that are moving slightly slower than uh, than the likes of Edgeo. Thank you for that, that, Walter. Addresses um, the uh, question. Yes, thank you, Walter. Um, we have only four minutes left, and we want to be prompt. So to close, I'm going to anchor onto what Ben said about this being a catch twenty two. You know, content trying to get to the eyeballs, and eyeballs trying to get to the content. So AM6 Lagos has a very vital role to play in the West African region. Um, so we've had a very packed session. It went really well. Um, our focus is on decentralization and bringing the content closer to the eyeballs. Um, I want to thank Walter for that insightful keynote speech. And I want to thank the panel session, which was complimentary and amazing. I also want to thank all our panelists for taking time out of their busy schedules to be here with us today. Thank you, Ben, for coming. And thank you, Kendall, for being here. Kendall from Tizetti and Ben from Edu. Um, I also want to thank our superb moderator, Shaya, for holding that conversation. Um, thank you, you were very insightful and you drove the conversation really excellently. Um, finally, I want to thank our, uh, our fantastic panelists who came with energy, giving us questions and engaging in the chat. This has been phenomenal. Um, it's been about 57 minutes and we're going to end on time. But before we go, I want to use this opportunity to again invite all our participants to the African Peering and Interconnection Forum holding in Ghana. You can register to join virtually or in person. The link is in the chat box. Um, let's continue that, this conversation offline. If you're interested in any of our various amazing services that we offer, please send an email to info at mdxi.com or am 6 lagos at mdx-i.net. It's also in the chat box. So it is now 11.58 a.m. West African time on Wednesday, the 20, 26th of July. And I want to thank you all for joining us. I'm, I'm be, I've been your anchor for the last 59 minutes. My name is Ayemide Jones, and it's bye for now. Thank you all. Thank you.